The Lord Jesus had 12 original disciples, but those men were just the first of many more followers of Christ. They are an example for us to learn from and a reminder that God works in ordinary people. Are you a true follower of Jesus Christ? Let's study the 12 with Scott Pauley today and find truth that will help us all to follow more closely to Christ. The third member of Jesus' inner circle was a man by the name of John. He's referred to in Scripture as the beloved disciple. We'll see that more in just a moment. Uh, But he is the only disciple that is at the cross. I want you to ponder that for just a moment. Because most of the snapshots we are taking of these individual disciples are near the, the beginning of their relationship with our Lord or the beginning of Christ's ministry. But with John, I want to take you to the other end of the spectrum. Because John, who was the brother of James, who was a member of the inner circle disciple, who was close to Christ all through his life. In fact, he was the one who leaned on Jesus' breast at supper. When you come to the end, when you come to Calvary, he is the only disciple there. How could that be? Now, remember, Peter's cursed and swore and said he didn't know the man. And the Bible says all the disciples forsook him and fled. Now, if all means all, that means that even John in the Garden of Gethsemane had departed. Even John, at the, at the night of his betrayal and arrest, had forsaken our Lord and fled like the rest of the disciples, and yet something has happened because John has returned. Isn't that a beautiful thought? Friend, perhaps you have strayed from Christ. Perhaps you've gone away from the Lord like so many others have. Perhaps you're following afar off. I want you to know today it's time to return to the cross. It's time to get as near to the Lord Jesus as you possibly can. And so we come to John chapter number 19. John 19 verse 25 says this, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. Ponder this. There are three Marys, three women standing at the foot of the cross. Where are the men? Where are the apostles? And then you come to verse 26. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, He saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. Now, we know what's going on here. Christ is dying. He literally is speaking one of the only expressions we have from the cross. We know that his mother is there, which to me is powerful evidence again of who Christ is, because even Mary knew. Everybody knows mother knows. Mother would have known if this had all been a lie, a falsehood, a facade, but she knew better. You see, she saw him now not only as her son, but as her Savior. She had become a disciple, a true follower of Jesus Christ. And then there's another character. There is not only Jesus in this conversation and Mary in this conversation, but there is John. You'll notice that that Joseph, Jesus' uh, earthly stepfather and Mary's husband is not mentioned later in the gospel records. He's not here at the death. And it's our conviction that Joseph was much older than Mary and that he had already passed off the scene. So imagine, humanly speaking, that Mary has lost Joseph and now she's watching her own son die. And Jesus, like any good son, the perfect son, gives us this wonderful example of taking care of his mother to the very end, honoring her all the way I can imagine from from his man's perspective, he's looking at his mother who had cared for him as a child, and the recognition is that he will not be here to care for her in her old age. So he's taking care of her now. Isn't it beautiful? He is he's making sure she's going to be cared for by committing her to John. So typically when we come to these verses, we're we're looking, concentrating on the cross and on our Lord Jesus, and rightly so, that's the emphasis of Scripture. And then sometimes we look at it from Mary's perspective, but ponder with me for just a moment this disciple whom Jesus loved. Ponder for just a moment John. What do we learn about John, the only disciple at the cross? Well, let me give you three simple thoughts today. First of all, he was true. This was a man 
who was true to Christ. He was true to what he believed. That doesn't mean he didn't have his lapses in judgment. It doesn't mean that he didn't have his failures. Remember, he, like James, had asked for uh, a seat at Jesus' right hand someday in ambition. He, like his brother James, had wanted to call down fire from heaven on the Samaritan village. He had his failures and flaws, and yes, he, like the rest of the disciples, on the night of Christ's betrayal and arrest, had forsaken our Lord and fled. But watch this. A true disciple, a true follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, though he may fail the Lord, will come under conviction of sin and will desire to be right with God again. What is the proverb? A just man falleth seven times and riseth again. And so John was a true disciple. Here he stands He is the first disciple to have repented. He is the first disciple to have returned. Now, the rest will. You remember, Peter's going to come back to the Lord. All the disciples are going to return to the Lord. In Acts chapter 1, they'll all be there outside of Judas Iscariot in the upper room praying. But John is the first back near the cross. He is a picture of a true follower. And then, not only is he true, but he's tender. Now, this is ironic because, remember, he's one of the sons of thunder, And he has a dynamic personality, and yet we get this picture of tenderness because the Bible says he's the disciple whom Jesus loved. In other places, the beloved disciple. He's the one who leaned on Jesus' breast at supper. I love this thought. He had a certain intimate uh, friendship and fellowship with Jesus Christ. Uh, he He was tender to the Lord, and the Lord had a tender place in his heart for him. That doesn't mean that Jesus loved John more than the others, In fact, the Bible says that having loved his own, he loved them to the end. He loved all the disciples. He loved Judas Iscariot. He he called him friend in the garden on the night of the betrayal. But I want you to see the intimate relationship that Jesus and John shared here, even in the hour of death. Can I say to every follower of Jesus that's studying with us today, be a true follower and be a tender follower. Keep your heart tender towards the Lord. Love him in return recognize his deep love for you, walk as close to Christ as you possibly can. John wanted to be near Jesus in life, and now John wants to be near him in death. And there's a third thing we learn from this disciple standing at the cross, not only that he is true and tender, but that he is trusted. Ponder this a moment. Of all the disciples Jesus could have committed the keeping and care of his mother to, he chose John. Jesus, who knew everything about every one of them, recognizes that John will be a good son to his mother. We know that Jesus' brethren had not yet believed on him. By the time you get to Acts, they do believe on him. That's exciting, isn't it, to know that that his uh, physical, biological brothers, his family, would come to faith and understanding who he was, would come to a deeper relationship with him. But to this point, they're not present And so what does our Lord do? Our Lord commits the keeping of his mother to a spiritual man. You see, you want spiritual people looking after your family. People that love God will love them. And John was a disciple that would be trusted. From beginning to end, John, the only disciple at the cross, seems to be a disciple that exhibits a true faithfulness to Christ and love for Christ. In fact, he was the youngest of the original disciples, and he will live the longest. He will outlive all the rest, and he will write the gospel record we're studying from today. He will write 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and yes, he will pen on the Isle of Patmos the revelation of Jesus Christ. Because he stayed close, he was given an opportunity and a responsibility, a privilege and stewardship like none other. And might I say to you, if you want God to use you, to work in you and through you, stay as close to Christ and as close to the cross as you possibly can. Thank you for joining us today as we looked into God's Word. It is our prayer that you will follow Christ and lead others to Him. Our world is desperate for truth and hope. Scott Pauley has written a new booklet on the need of our nation that addresses what believers can and should be doing at this time. Order your copy now at enjoyingthejourney.org. We'd love to hear from you and look forward to studying with you again next time on Enjoying the Journey.